Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. I hope you have a wonderful day. And even though we're in lockdown, I still hope that you just have an awesome day. And kids, don't forget to wish your dads, your uncles, and your grandpas a very happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, especially to my dad. I hope you have an amazing Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Pastor, Monica. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. Happy Sunday. Yeah. Okay, uh, happy Father's Day, uh, Pastor. Uh, thank you so much, Lord. Everything you is done, Lord. I really appreciate them. I really uh, happy to me. I feel at home. Uh, even though I feel like I'm far away, all families feel like I'm happy. But I'm still happy. Because you look out at me, I'm happy. Papa, Blumivla. So once again, we just uh, want to wish you happy, happy Father's Day. Thank you very much. Good morning, church. I'm Michaela. And I'm Taylor. To all the fathers, I hope you have an amazing day. And a special happy Father's Day to Uncle Joel Kayser. So don't forget, members, we have our PD Day coming up, so don't forget to register in for that. We also have our marriage night coming up, so couples, remember to check your emails for all the details for the special night. Today's speaker is Pastor Sean, who will be speaking around the topic of Father's Day. Our offering is also for the men's shed, so if you'd like to put in for that, you can also do that online on our Turning Point webpage. We all hope you have an amazing day, and all the fathers have an amazing Father's Day. Bye.
morning everybody, it's communion time and it's communion time on Father's Day. Happy Father's Day dads, hope you have a fantastic day. Now I thought today what we might do was we might remember Jesus, which is what he told us to do when we have communion, remember me he said, we might remember Jesus from the perspective of the Father and the Father had lots of wonderful things to say about Jesus and has of course an extraordinary relationship with his son Jesus. There's a good example in what's called the Transfiguration where Jesus took James and John and Peter up, up to a mountain and he was transfigured before them. He shone, his face shone, his clothes shone and Moses and Elijah appeared with him and they were speaking with him and then all of a sudden the father interjects and he says this is my beloved son. He brings me great joy. So listen to me. So there's an insight into what the Father thinks about Jesus. Because Jesus brings the Father great joy. There's a piece of scripture in um, Philippians which talks about the fact that Jesus has also been given a name by the Father which is above every other name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and confess that he is Lord of everything to the glory of the Father. Now, why did God give him that honour? Why was God able to give Jesus that honour? He's not arbitrary in his decisions. He doesn't just decide something, oh, well, I like this guy and I don't like this guy. Let's have a look at what... Um, Philippians says about Jesus. So Jesus didn't demand and cling to his right of being God, but laid aside his mighty power and his glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming a man. And he humbled himself even further, going so far as to actually die a criminal's death on a cross. Now the next per verse gives us a little more insight. Yet it was because of this that God raised Jesus to the heights of heaven and gave him a name which is above every other name. And then it goes on to that scripture that I just talked about. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. You see, why was God able to raise Jesus up? Why did he choose to raise Jesus up? It was because Jesus was able to commit himself to the Father's will, able to do exactly what the Father wanted him to do. And it brought joy to the Father's heart. So this morning, let's remember that Jesus, his death, was actually the thing that God wanted him to do all along because God's intent is to draw us to himself as he has for those who have accepted what Jesus has done. So the word says Jesus died death on the cross. We have bread and we have juice. Red because it stands for the blood of Jesus and bread it's broken because God asked Jesus to give his body as a covering for our sins. So today we will have the bread first of all and remember that Jesus died for us and that death gave the Father great glory. Let's take the bread now. And then we have the juice which represents Jesus' blood, the full death that Jesus went through to take away my sins and the sins of the world. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your desire to bring us to yourself. Jesus, we remember you this morning. We remember that you've done such an amazing thing for us with such generosity, with such love, 
and which such, with such abandon to the Father's desires and the Father's heart. We thank you for that, Jesus. And we give you praise and glory and honour. And we join with your joy, Father, at your Son, Jesus. We thank you for him, in Jesus' name. Amen.
tongues and then I will give the interpretation afterwards. My children, my sons, my warriors, it is time to stand up. It is time to step out. It is time to take back what the enemy has stolen from us for so long. My sons, I am calling you. I am calling you to stand up and wear the mantle that is placed upon you to be the head of your household, to be the leader in your household, to be the leader in your community, to be the leader in your workplace, to lead with the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, to win back the broken families, to win back the broken homes. It is time that we take back what the devil has stolen from us. He has stolen our wives, he has stolen our children, he has stolen our families. It is time, I'm calling my warriors to stand up. I'm calling my warriors to step out. I'm calling my warriors to take back what the devil has stolen. Just like my son Joshua, we need to stand and declare that we will serve the Lord regardless of what is happening around us, regardless of what work, what the world is doing. We need to take back what is rightfully ours. We need to take back what is rightfully ours. My brothers, it's time. It's time to get out of the back row. It is time to get out of the background. And it is time to step up and step forward into the calling that God has placed on every man. And that is to be the head and not the tail. To be the spiritual leader. To be the one that leads his family into a place of worship. To be the one that leads his family into a place of ministry. To be the one that leads his family into the presence of God. My brothers, it is time to take back what the devil has been stealing for thousands of years. It is time to take back what is rightfully ours, the authority in us that comes through Jesus Christ. I want to pray this morning for broken families. I want to pray this morning for the prodigals to return home. We declare that this morning in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to all you young men out there who have turned your back on God. I'm speaking to you this morning because God is saying it is time. It is time. It is time to get your head out of the gutter. It is time to get your head out of the drugs. It is time to get your head out of the alcohol. It is time to get your head out of the addiction and turn back to Jesus. My brothers, I'm speaking to you this morning. Our families need us to stand up and be counted in God's army. Our families need us to step up and be counted in God's army. The harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. We are the workers that God has called. We are the workers that God has called.
Happy Father's Day, Dad. I hope you have a great day. Um, I love how you're always pushing me to write music and um, excelling that and all my music and everything. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I hope you have a great day today. Something that I love about my dad is that he's always ready to take us somewhere, even if we don't need to go. And he's always like making us get out of the house. Bye. Hope you have a great Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Um, the thing I love about Dad is that he always comes home and he always gives us big hugs. Bye. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and grandfathers. Hope you're having an amazing day. And the one thing I love about my dad is that he's always helping me and he always lets me help him in everything that he does. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Um, what I want to, what I like about my dad is because he's kind and caring. This is out. I just love my birthday. And that's my my child. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. And tomorrow. I love you. I love you. morning church and welcome to our Father's Day service. Kids, I hope that you have spoiled your fathers this morning. I hope that they all got breakfast in bed and they got great gifts and that you're going to make this the best Father's Day ever. Even though we can't go out anywhere, I really want you to spoil your dads. Uh, being a father myself uh, and being in ministry, I understand the weight of what it means to be a man and carry the mantle that God has called us to carry. So I want to encourage you, spoil your dads. They are amazing, they love you, and you need to love and honour and respect them. God bless you. I'm going to read from a book that, that I've read through a couple of times. It's called Being a Dad Who Leads by John MacArthur. No duty in my life is more important or more sacred than my role as a husband and a father. That is where my true character is most accurately seen. And it is the best single gauge of my overall success or failure as a leader and role model. Everything else I do as a pastor, educator, author or ministry leader would be severely compromised if I failed to lead my own family properly. In fact, this is one of the key tests of whether a man is to fit, is, sorry, of whether a man is fit to lead the church. Because if I am a man that does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? 1 Timothy 3, 5. Now that word may be a little bit confronting to some of you, maybe even challenging. Maybe some of you think that that's not fair. But I'm not here to judge you and I'm not here to condemn you. What I am here to do is share with you my heart and my passion to see the men in God's kingdom rise up. To see the men in God's kingdom lead their families into a place of worship, into a place of surrender, into a place of ministry that comes as we take on the responsibility that God laid on us right at creation. And that is to lead our households, to lead our households spiritually, to lead our households spiritually. The way we do that is by showing, is by being an example of how we pursue God, how we pursue God in the good times, how we pursue God in the bad times. How we pursue God no matter the circumstances that we face. That's how we do that, brothers. 
And even though I know we have an amazing audience of sisters and, and women and, and ladies that watch our service, I am directing this morning to my brothers. Because we need to rise up. The harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. And we need to lead the way for the workers. Turn with me to Ephesians 2.10. And I'm going to teach out of there this morning. It says, For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do good things. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. I'm going to read that again. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew. In Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. The Lord Jesus has created us anew. You are a new creation. I am a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. That is what the scripture tells us. So my brothers, stop. Stop going back to the old. Stop going back to the old ways. Stop going back to the old habits. That's what Paul is saying. We are new. Regardless of what the world calls us or what the world brands us with, we are new in Christ Jesus. And we remain new as we stay in Christ Jesus. Not as we go and do it on our own, but as we remain in Christ Jesus. You are a new creation. There are, during worship, during the worship practice and during the worship set, you know, I felt the Lord saying there are men that are going to be watching this morning that are broken. I want to say to you, you are a new in Christ Jesus. You have to. You must say goodbye to the old life. You have to cut it off. You have to turn your back on it and walk toward Jesus. You have to do that. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. We need to learn how to remain, how to get in, how to stay in Christ Jesus so that we remain a new creation. And he did this so that we can do the good things that he planned for us. Fatherhood is an amazing thing. It brings me the greatest joy. I sat and watched as my children led worship for this service. And with so much joy in my heart, I just thanked the Lord. That he would bless me with that. That he would bless me with, with the fact that my children have a relationship with him. He wants to do a good work through you. He wants to bless the generations through you. But my brothers, we have to rest in Christ Jesus. We have to stay in Christ Jesus. We have to turn our back on the world. We have to turn our back on addiction, we have to turn our back on the desires of our flesh. We have to turn our back on this, on the desire to, to, to have more and be more. And we have to turn in to the arms of Christ Jesus. That's how we lead our family, by showing them, showing our wives, Showing our sons, showing our daughters, showing our babes, showing them how to turn in to the arms of Jesus. And how to turn away, away from the temptation of this world. We have to set that example. That is our responsibility to set that example for our family. And some of you may not have a family. 
But I can guarantee you there is a whole spiritual family waiting for you to show them how to do it. For those of you that know our Pastor Wolfgang, he is the spiritual father to over 200 men. They are not his biologically, but by God, they're his spiritually. And he leads them with love and by example. He leads them. Brothers, that's what we are called to do. That's what we are called to do. And Jesus has given you everything you need to do that. Every tool you need to do that will be given to you through Christ Jesus. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Direct your child onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. Direct your child onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. There comes a point in life where children become accountable for their own action. What we can't do is take their accountability for them. What we can't do is take their will away from them. What we can do is be an example to how to come into Christ. What we can do is teach them and train them. What they do with that is entirely up to them. But what we can do is teach them and train them. And then grab hold of the scripture. Grab hold of these verses and claim them over your children's lives. Claim them over your children's lives. Declare it, my brothers, declare it over your children's lives. Declare the word of God over your children. You know, late at night, when all my kids are asleep, when my household is asleep, that's when I walk around and I declare life over my children. I prophesy over them. I tell the devil that he has no hold on their life, that he has no right, that he has no access into their life. Why? Because that is the authority that God gave me. We've got to exert that authority over our family. We've got to exert that authority over our household. Direct your child onto the right path. And when they are older, they will not leave it. Proverbs 22, 6. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Do not provoke your children. Our culture is all about teasing and putting people down. Kingdom culture is all about building people up. Is all about encouraging. Is all about uplifting. Is all about building our children up, not putting them down. Get rid of the culture of this land and soak in the culture of God. Kingdom culture. Rather than bringing them up with the discipline and instruction, sorry, rather bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Now you can't receive discipline and instruction from the Lord if you're not with the Lord, if you're not in Christ, if you're facing the world and taking in everything that the world is telling you and you have your back turned to Christ, how can he instruct you? How can he lead you? How can he direct you? He can't. We have to run in to the arms of Jesus Christ and get counsel from him. Learn from him how to parent. Learn from him how to disciple. Learn from him how to be a better father. Because we can all be better fathers. Me, my hand goes up first. We can all be better fathers. But that comes through getting into the presence of God. 
That comes through relationship with Jesus Christ. That comes through listening to that still small voice of God that tells us and teaches us how to parent, how to instruct, how to love. Dads, I want to encourage you this morning, if you haven't in a long time, grabbed your baby girls and given them a hug, then do it. Don't wait for tomorrow. Just do it right now. Hold them in your arms. Show them what love is. Show them what real love is. Don't leave it for someone else to teach your girls what love is. You teach them what love is. You teach them how they should be treated and respected. You teach them what love is. Don't leave that up to the world. So I'm going to give you a moment. If your girls are there around you, call them over and just give each one of them. Some of you may have more than one like I do. Give each one of them a huge hug. And tell them, tell them that you love them. Charles Spurgeon says in one of his famous quotes, when fathers are tongue-tied religiously with their offspring, need they wonder if their children's hearts remain sin-tied? Yes, we have to teach our children the Word of God. More importantly than teaching is showing them how to live out the Word of God. Showing them how to love. Showing them how to care. Showing them how to follow instructions and rules. Showing them what is right and wrong. Showing them how to make good decisions. And showing them how to get with God when you make bad decisions. Every step of our life we should include our children in. We shouldn't exclude them from what God is doing in our life. We should include them into what God is doing in our life so that they will learn how to grow and how to come into relationship with God. D.L. Moody says, A man ought to live so that everybody knows that he is a Christian. And most of all, his family ought to know powerful we've got to soak that in brothers we've got to soak that in a man ought to live so that everybody knows he is a Christian and most of all his family ought to know one Corinthians 11 1 says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Brothers, we should all be able to say that confidently if we are in Christ. When Paul wrote this, when the Holy Spirit spoke this through Paul, Paul wasn't saying that we need to be perfect. We are never, ever, ever going to be perfect. There is only one that is perfect, and that is the Father, God the Father. We are never, ever going to be perfect. But what Paul is saying is be confident in who you are. Be confident that what you are doing is worthy of following. Be confident that where you are going is worthy of following. Be confident that the choices you make, the decisions you make, the way you behave, the way you act is worthy of following. Because whether you like it or not, there are little eyes and little ears and little minds that are soaking in everything that we do. Everything that we do. They are like sponges just soaking and absorbing what we do 
So whether you're setting a good example or a bad example, they are soaking that in. My kids, when we get into prayer and we get into worship, they go, Dad, why do you always cry? And I say to them, because I, I'm, I'm with the Lord. He's talking to me. He's telling me things. And I said, I'm happy. I'm so happy that we can do it together as a family. Now they're starting to express their emotions as we come together in prayer and worship. My brothers, I want you to be confident in saying this to your children. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. We can't follow his example if we are not running into his arms. We cannot follow his example if we're not reading the word. We cannot follow his example if we're not on our knees when times get tough. Follow Christ's example, that your family can follow your example. It's really important that we grab hold of this. It is a powerful, powerful statement that Paul makes. And a confident statement. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. My heart is that all of our men can say that. My heart is that all of our church can say that. That the generation after us won't have to wait till they're a 39 year old man. That my children will be able to say at a young age, follow my example as I follow Christ. How awesome church. How awesome when we have a generation of young people saying to their peers, follow me as I follow Christ. With confidence and boldness and power. Someone has to set that benchmark. Someone has to send that benchmark. That someone is us. That someone is you. That someone is me. We have to set that benchmark. That the generation after us will be more powerful will be more bold, will be a better example of Jesus Christ. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. In Joshua 22, 24, I think 24 verse 15, Right at the end of the book of Joshua, after he'd led the people into the promised land, seeing God do amazing things, and once again the Israelites had fallen away from God. They began to worship other idols, and they began to do all the things that God told them not to do. In chapter 15, Joshua stands up in front of his people as their leader. And he makes a statement, and he says to his people, on this day, you choose to do what you want to do. You choose to do what you want to do. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Men, it is time to make that declaration. It is time to stop pussyfooting around. It is time to stop messing around. It is time to stop playing the games. And it's time to get serious. It is time to take that mantle that God has given us and wear it with pride. That we rest in Christ Jesus. And that as we lead our family, they will serve the Lord. Joshua was not speaking for himself. He was speaking for his entire household. His wife, his children, their children, their wives, their servants. He spoke for them all. Why? Because he spoke with the God-given authority that he had. 
God has given that authority to each and every one of us who calls ourselves a man, a husband, a father. He has given us that authority. It's time to declare that over our family. It's time to walk with the authority that God has given us. The devil only has access to what you give him access to. He doesn't have any more access than that. He is completely powerless. The only power he has is the power that we give him. And if you don't give him anything, he can't use anything against you or against your children. We have to understand this. We have to get this. That we have a God-given authority and a God-given mantle to lead our family into the arms of Jesus Christ. As we walk embraced, as we walk linked, as we walk linked with Jesus, the author and the perfecter. That's how we lead our family, not on our own, but arm in arm. Jesus on one side, Holy Spirit on the other side, fully surrounded by the Godhead. Walking towards where God is leading us. My brothers, that is what we are called to do. And I can't say that with any more urgency than that is what we are called to do. Each one of us needs to come into that moment like Joshua. Joshua where we stand and declare that from this day, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. There is a whole generation of children that are fatherless, that need you to be their spiritual father, that need you to show them how to live and how to love that need you to show them how to run in to the arms of Jesus Christ. I'm just going to read in closing just the opening statement from, uh, from John MacArthur's book. It says, To my children, all of them are walking with Christ. Raising their own children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. That is far and away the greatest joy a father can experience. Amen. 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 A long time ago, me and Jade made a decision that regardless of what happened, our first ministry will always be to those that God has blessed us with, that is our children. Our first ministry will always be to our children. And church, I love you, but I will always be a father before I am a pastor. I will always be a father before I am a leader. That is a decision that we made long before we came into ministry, that our first ministry would always be at home. I want to encourage you with that and I want to challenge you with that. If God has spoken to you this morning and you need to talk, I'm more than happy to talk with you. You want to give me a call on my mobile, you want to contact me via Facebook, you want to get in touch with the office, however you want to do that, I would love to sit down and talk with you. Because I do believe in my heart of hearts. My brothers, as we take that mantle, as we put it on and we walk with the authority that God has given us, we are going to see incredible things happen. Signs and wonders will follow those who believe. Signs and wonders will follow those who believe. I shared in, uh, in, in my word that I gave during worship that there are some young men out there who are broken. If you've never experienced a father's love, and it's hard to understand what a father's love is, 
and you need to get alongside a brother or sister and have them pray with you and encourage you and disciple you through that. Not experiencing a father's love is no excuse to continue living the lifestyle you're living. It's no excuse because there is a father, there is the father that loves all of us. And he sent his one and only son that you would be set free from your addiction, from your bondage, from whatever situation you're in. He sent Jesus that you would be set free. So if you want to know what it means to be set free, if you want to know more about what it means to be set free, then get in touch with us. Send us a text, send us a Facebook friend request, send us, send us something. But there's so many ways you can get in touch with us. You'll see them on the screen right now. My number's there as well. If you need to talk to me, please, by all means, ring. I'm going to close in prayer now and I'm going to pray for the fathers of this house. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all of our fathers. I thank you, Lord, that you will continue to work in them and with them, Father God. Lord, like me, we can all be better fathers, Lord God. So, Lord, I pray that our desire is not to turn to the world for answers, Father God, but to turn to you and run into your embrace, Father God. That in that embrace, Father God, we will receive your counsel, your direction, your instruction, Father God. Lord, I pray that over all of our fathers, Lord God. Lord, I especially want to pray for those fathers. I especially want to pray for those fathers whose hearts have been broken by their children, who long to see restoration, who long to see peace, who long to see joy in the lives of their children, Father God. Lord, I just reach out and I pray for every one of those children, Lord God. Father God, that by the example that is set by their fathers, Lord God, they will come to see you as their Lord and Saviour. They will come to see you as the one to turn to. Lord, I just pray that you will continue to mend the broken heart, Lord Jesus. You will continue to mend the broken heart, Lord Jesus. You will continue to mend the broken heart, Lord Jesus. And you will restore the love of the fathers and the sons back to each other. And daughters, Lord God. And daughters, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for this time this morning. Thank you, Lord, for, for technology, Lord God, that we can still get your message across through this pandemic. Lord, I pray that this is not the time to be fear-mongering. This is not the time to listen to what this one is saying or what that one is saying, but this is the time to press into your word. And your word is clear, Father God. No one knows the hour except the Father. So Lord, I pray that as a church, we are not focused on what is being prophesied or what's being said or anything like that, Father God. And we are not torn by every wind of doctrine, Father God. But Lord, that we continue to move in the commission that you gave us, Father God. And that is to go into all the world and make disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That in everything, Father God, we are prepared in season and out of season for your return, Lord God. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. And I pray that over our church in Jesus' name. God bless you, Kiwi Rup. God bless you, officer. God bless you, future church plants. God bless you, fathers. God bless you, fathers. Walk with your chest out, knowing that you are walking arm in arm with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God bless you all. Have a great Father's Day, and um, we'll see you when we can see you. God bless you.
okay, Shekinah, what's something that you like or love about Dad? What I love about my dad is when we're sleeping, he works he works hard at night and he works very hard. And most of the time, he works long hours and he does it all for us. That's what I like about my dad. I love. Miracle, what do you like about Dad? Dad is funny and also he's crazy. Crazy? Why is he crazy? He dances around the house and shakes his booty. <laughs> yeah. I also like it when he dances with Mum. <laughs> okay, Mickey. So tell me something that you like about Dad. When Mum's not around, he spoils us with junk food and he lets us watch TV and does our chores. Is that right? Is that right, girls? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Johanna Praise, tell me what you love most about Dad. I love Dad because he always let me sneak in my bed. And I love Dad because he always because his bed is nice and warm. <laughs> Zizi, yeah. do you love Daddy? Yes, he's Iron Man. What? Why do you love Daddy? He's Iron Man. He's Iron Man? Yeah. Oh, wow. Do you ever feel like you're tired of? You want to lose your ground. You want to show that. And I believe it will be over soon. And I believe it will be over soon. My dad will start to shiver, start to yell, and my dad will peek and I will duck. He's my superhero, I know it, and you should know it too. He comes out of the light into the dark to save each other, one of us. I am thankful it is so precious to me. And I just want to say, Happy Father's Day. Father's Day, Dad. I love you. He's fun and cuddly and warm. Thank you for working, working hard for us. Happy Father's Day. I love you. Thank you to teach you to me stuff. I hope you will have a good day. And what's your favorite thing about dad? Um, 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 teaches. Teaches? Yeah. He teaches you? Yeah. Aww. Papa Dan. Papa Dan? Yeah. Aww, we love you too, Papa Dan. So last week we went yep. to find this, and it's one of the fruit of the spirits um, that we we learnt about throughout uh, throughout this term, and we're learning about the fruit of the spirits because the Holy Spirit has gifted all of us with all these amazing gifts for us to use in the life we live in our homes, when we go to school, when we go to work, us as parents, when we and and. Um, leaders as we go to work whatever we do god has given us all these um fruit of the spirit so that we could display it out for the world to see um the goggles on matthew 6 33 but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness above all else and all these things will be added on to you so that's our memory verse. Next week. Um... Dear Heavenly Father, please wish that night will be a great night and we'll learn more about you and please wish that we'll be safe. And please wish that.
think that's a good banana? Put your thumbs up if you think it's a good banana. Does it have any brown bits on the banana? No. So. I got it in your eyebrow. We can hear you guys. I'm trying to get. Ow. What's up? What's up, dogs? <laughs> no. What? What's happened? What on earth are you, Tyrone? There's a pirate. <laughs> Hurry up! Beauty's pain. Yeah, beauty is pain. I'm the Bob Marley man. <laughs> Did you tell from me drugs? <laughs> is he the? <laughs> Sean Calladay, who are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Good guess. Somebody that's really old and is a rapper. Oh, yeah. Vanilla Ice. <laughs> vanilla Ice. <What? laughs> <laughs> He's more modern day than that. Legs weak, arms heavy. Cool. Oh. DJ Kelly? Me brother Eminem. <laughs> the thing in the Bible here about faith, um, it's long, but I'll narrow it down. Um, and it just says, don't pursue things, and we're talking about pursuing, don't pursue things that don't last. Build your house on the only thing that can last, which is faith. Um, and your faith will tackle your problems before they tackle you, if you have faith. Um, and it's the only one thing, it's the only one thing that no one can take away from you is your faith. Um, I have blue hair, short blue, blue, short blue hair, a, a green Bobby. dress, a green dress. Dora. No. <laughs> That's what my friends call me in school. Someone's brain. Oh, oh inside out. Boy. Sadness. Inside out. Joy. Yep, that's a joke. It's joy. It's joy. Short blue hair, green dress. Who Sadness is? has blue hair, but blue clothes. Oh. <laughs> Sometimes I think if you guys are even humans. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Nothing. Trust was uh, the disciple of Paul. And then Aaron said, no, we shouldn't say that he was the disciple of Paul. We should say that it's, he's the disciple of Jesus Christ. He's working, he's, he's uh, ministering um, for our Lord. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm confused a little bit about, you know, I shouldn't say that, but I was just like, okay, I want to just have some clarifications about that. Good. Now, back we disciples of God, but back then didn't they describe it as like like John before Christ came? Like John had his own like disciples. Uh, Paul's in a fellowship with him. So I'm not sure if that's referring to, you know, they're both disciples of the one God. Mm hmm And simple answer God, but I think back in the days, yeah, they referred to them as teachers. Oh just okay. like I'm a disciple of so and so. Sort of thing okay but in the end result it was like you're the disciple of god yep got a bible yeah yeah matthew 28 verse 19 and 20. you're a walking bible and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So who, who needs to go and make disciples? Is God making disciples? No, we need to make disciples. 
we make All right, so if we're making disciples, then whose disciples are they? Disciples. In the name of Jesus Christ. Me. But when when you rely not on yourself and what the circumstances are putting around you, and you believe that God will always work for your good no matter what, you have this peace that surpasses on understanding. And it is one of the main foundations in your Christian walk because without it, you wouldn't be able to do all the things that he wants you to do. Now, that might be one of my strong ones, Gentleness, I definitely have to work on because <laughs> it's just what I, well, we're not perfect in everything, are we? Yeah. And you've got to find your way of getting into that place with God. Jesus found it through prayer. Everyone has a different way of doing it, but it's finding that place and, and you know, when we do struggle, getting into that. I'll find my peace in possession. Well, God, that isn't the truth. And so the Holy Spirit will just continuously yep. work on us. Yep. It's like we... addiction. You know, addiction changes its face. You know, we, we, talk, we talk about alcohol and drugs and, and gambling and stuff like that. There are, there's, there's thousands more addictions. Yes. You've got to be mindful to that. That's right. You know, yeah. so again, that, that's a growth thing in the storm with them so although these problems and we're going to have it every day uh problems and situations that we can't control and we've got to learn to let god take know that god is in it with us and then we don't panic we just need to realize or get with the peacemaker you know what i mean Mm.